Dogs have an incredible sense of smell. It's estimated to be 10,000 to 100,000 times more powerful than ours. Could your smartphone ever compete? Some dogs can even be trained to sniff out diseases, like certain cancers, COVID, diabetes, and they're actually pretty accurate. The dogs have done a fantastic job of showing us what nature's capable of. Although the dogs themselves aren't always reliable. It's really hard work for the dogs. They have to concentrate really hard and they can get tired. And also sometimes they have a bad day. And when we're dealing with some of these diseases, we don't want to risk um, that dog having a bad day and us missing something that could be very important. Enter the electronic nose. Researchers at MIT created an electronic nose using chemical odor sensors. You are constantly leaking biologically important information from every pore of your body to the right nose. This can be mined for information. So what do diseases smell like? Cancer itself, or even COVID, does not leave a trace in the form of a single molecule that you can identify. Your body odor, your various emissions contain a bouquet of odorants. What your body is doing, let's say I'm fighting COVID, leaves an imprint. That imprint is what the dog sees. How could an electronic nose do the same job? Andreas Mershon and his research group at MIT use a pump to pass an odor over an array of sensors, which react differently to each molecule. The signals from these sensors are sent to a computer that interprets them using machine learning. So our artificial dog intelligence is trying to find what is the essence without reducing it to a list of names and concentrations. We've generated the raw data, then we feed it into the machine, and with machine learning algorithms, we can now basically train it, exactly as we do the dog. The most interesting application is to make a nose that can be trained on anything like the dog. So today you train it on bombs, the day after you train it on drugs, the day after you train it on cancer. As far as these electronic noses are concerned, this may be one of the most intimate forms of sensing. What we've shown with olfaction is that you can learn quite a bit about the person. They give you this, this sense of uh, individuality, but also a very precise picture of the individual from a health perspective as well. Just how accurate is this electronic nose? The question of the accuracy, the dogs are still leading the way. In all cases, the dogs are beating us, but not because their noses are more sensitive to individual molecules, but because they can make more sense of the massive amount of signal that they're getting. The challenge is no longer in catching every last little odorant. The challenge is making sense of it. Inside the lab, you can clean up the air, you can you know, use very extremely controlled conditions, and then you can say, oh, I've detected this, I've detected that. As soon as you take it outside the lab, where everybody's wearing perfume and smoking cigars, it's a wild west out there. Martian's team hopes that the sensors with the ability to smell will one day be incorporated to smartphones. All of your technologies right now on your body have cameras and microphones on them. One thing they're lacking is an ability to sense the molecules in the air. We will be able to have a stream of data from all over the planet in real time that is capable of being mined to identify diseases, to find the boundaries of a pandemic, to find emergent pandemics, to find other threats such as pollution. Right now, the electronic nose is mostly being used in lab settings, but the potential for tech to collect information raises concerns about the privacy and security of health data. For instance, could your smartphone detect health issues of people you pass on the street or come into close contact with? Not quite yet. My preferred method is enabling it such that the individual owns their data, but that they can easily uh, share it. And so everyone can store their own small amounts of data at home in their own servers, as long as they get to retain ownership to both share it, but also to remove it from the population as well. The opportunity is vast, but the challenge is trust. You trust the dog, do you trust your insurance company or your cell phone provider with your data? No, you do not. So we need to fix this trust. And right now, there aren't any federal privacy laws protecting consumer data. Imagine the amount of goodness you can create with this, but also imagine the amount of bad you can do. This technology must have co-evolved with the laws around it because it is far too powerful.